plaster grocery bag can have so many wonderful uses. Apart from just recycling them, they can be used over and over to carry food once again from the local grocery store. Or you can use them for other things such as lining a small trash pail. Yes, but there is a dark, dark side. Just look at the struggles trying to keep them organized and tidy. This is where the handy dandy loom knitted plastic bag holder can save the day. Yes, you too can learn to make this wonderful plastic bag holder. Just stay tuned to find out how. Welcome back and thank you for staying tuned. I hope you will enjoy making this. What you will need to make our plastic bag holder is a 24 pack loom such as this. I got this one in a set from Michaels. You can order these looms online, different brands. This is a Michaels and it's a very good loom. I like it a lot. You're going to need your uh, pick tool to knit with. You're going to need a good pair of scissors. A measuring tape if you would like to measure the length of your plastic bag holder and a darning needle and your selected yarn your choices for yarn is a bulky weight you would use one strand of the bulky weight if you're using worsted weight you're going to use two strands I have a this is a one pound yarn I don't know what happened to the sleeve, but it pulls from the outside and a center pull. So I'm using both strands as such, but these two strands are going to be as one because one strand is not going to be thick enough for this wide gauge loom, which the gauge is by the space between each peg. So get your wide gauge 24 peg loom and let's get started. So you're going to make a slip knot just like so or however you like to make your slip knots. And this is the anchor peg. You're going to adjust it to the anchor peg. Remember, if you're using a worsted weight yarn, you're using the two strands as one yarn. But if that is going to confuse you, please use a bulkier weight yarn. The strand is already thick enough and you don't have to double it up. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the um, drawstring cast stone. And what we're going to do is we're going to go behind that first peg in front of the next. And it's just a zigzag through all the pegs till we get back to the beginning. So in and out, in and out, around one, in front of the other, around like so. This is only 24 pecs, so it doesn't take long to get around this loom. Okay, so we're back at the beginning. And, yeah, let's go behind here. So now, we've got to knit these off. So you're going to loosely hold the working yarn around the loom. And every peg that has two loops you're going to knit off and this looks like four but it's not remember we're using two strands as one so do this loosely hold it because if you do it too tight it's going to be hard to knit off so that one there's only one on here here's one with two so the the loop that you wrapped around on the first pass is what you're knitting over your working yarn if that doesn't make sense, just let me know in the comments if you have any questions concerning that. So just knit off all the pegs that have two strands of yarn. And you're going to do that until you get to the beginning. almost there and we have one more 
Okay. So now we've got our first, that was a cast on, that does not count as a row. So we're going to wrap that first one. Notice there's nothing to knit off here. So for this, this round only, you're just simply wrapping it. And then we're going to e-wrap the rest of the loom. Whoops. Sorry. Let's do that again. That's why I like to do it a little bit at a time instead of doing it all the way around because you don't lose what you've just wrapped. So just like so, we're going to knit every peg till we get back to the beginning. And I'm making a garter stitch bottom and top. And I'll show you what I mean by that. The middle of the, um, basically you're making a big sock with openings on both ends. So the middle of your sock is just going to be a basic knit. So once you get your top and bottom made, you know, the the beginning and then the end. This is a pretty easy project. If you are a beginner, you should be able to do this. It only requires an e-wrap and a purl. So if you can e-wrap and purl, you can do this project. This is the e-wrap that I'm showing you right now, and it looks like a little cursive e. That's how it got it that's how the name came about. There are many different stitches and I will show you that later in another video, but there are, are some videos out there that have all the stitches to show you. Okay, so we're back at the beginning. Now to make a garter stitch, you have to knit a roll and purl a row. So I'm going to make sure I have enough yarn so that my tension is about the same. Now you can use two different skeins of yarn or you can use half your yarn up and ball one up. Whatever is easier for you. So now we're going to purl. And to purl is simply you go at the top of the loop that's on your loom go down your working yarn is right here so you're going to scoop up a loop from your working yarn you're going to take the existing loop off the loom put the new loop back on the loom and tighten so for the garter stitch it's knit a row purl a row so we're going to do this stitch all the way around it's like going under the loop picking up a new loop taking the existing loop off putting the new loop on and tighten so let's do this all around the loom and i'm going to speed up and meet you at the beginning
enough for you to do that. Okay, this is the last peg. And the anchor peg kind of serves as a marker for the beginning. Of course, you would use different uh, styles of marking your looms if you're doing different stitches. Now, at this point, I would suggest taking the loop off of the anchor peg so the rest of your project doesn't weigh down. And what I will do is just pull it through like so under there and get it out of my way. Okay, so as I said, we're going to do a knit one, purl one. So the next row is a knit. Let me show you a few of the stitches and then I will let you have it until we get, we want the base of this to be, um, I would say about four inches. So that's what the measuring tape, you don't have to measure. If it looks right to you and you don't care about precise measurements, that is exact, absolutely fine. So the next row is an E-wrap. You can wrap your peg all the way around or you can do a few at a time like I do. I'm gonna knit over. So this is just e-wrapping one row and then when we go back to the beginning we'll do a purl. So I'm gonna continue doing this until I get the length that I desire for the base of my loom and then I will meet you back. So have fun knitting. Okay, I've been knitting and purling for a few rows and I wanna measure this. This looks about right. Um, I think I said four inches, but I think that's way too long at the beginning. I think this is right at an inch. So I think this is plenty to be a bottom and top. So this next part's super easy. There's no purling until we get to where we want to end it. So all we're gonna do, so this is about an inch, we're gonna knit for about 10 rows. Or, you know, just look at it. If it looks like the size that you want, just, you know, stop there. But we're just gonna knit. Now we can do a half knit to make it a tighter knit, or we can just do the E-wrap. E uh, you can do the true knit like this, but those are just different stitches. So since we've got this garter stitch, I'm just gonna stick with the E-wrap. It's one of the easier ones, especially when you are beginning. So again, E-wrap is just wrapping the yarn around your loom and taking the bottom loop over the top, like so. And remember, if you're using two strands of yarn, you know, that's two strands, but you're using them as one. So make sure you're getting both strands over the other two strands. So we're just going to knit and knit. Just go around. So it's just taking the bottom loop over the top. This top loop that you just wrapped stays on the peg. Wrap. So this part is easy. So I'm going to leave you at it. Just kind of keep watch on how long your project is getting. So you're just going to knit and knit and knit several rows rows you know until you have the length that you want for your bag holder so if you want to keep track of the rows it took you to get to where you want to be that's perfectly fine but i will meet you back when i get to a 10 inch center so happy knitting okay so i've been knitting for a while so I want to measure this and see how far I've gotten. It's not an exact science. Um, I'm not really counting the rows. I'm just working until I get to a desired length. So this is where I stopped. 
and going down to where I, my border is is 11 so I want it to be about 12 in the middle because I have the little bottom is about an inch maybe a little more and then I want to do a garter stitch um, top for about another inch so that'll make it what 12 14 inches which I think would be a very good size for a bag holder so we're going to knit keep knitting for a few more rows and make sure i start with the first peg so i'm just going to keep knitting um all the way around like i've been doing through this whole project and you can do the same and let's go for about three more knitted rounds and see where we are so i'll meet you back in just a few minutes okay so i've knitted a few more rows and i think we're about where i want it to be this isn't going to be precise because it does stretch out a little bit from the loom but do the best you can push your stitches down and start from there and is it where you want it to be it is close enough to 12 inches so i think i'm going to stop there and show you again remember how i showed you the garter stitch but i'm going to do it again at the top just to give it a nice bottom end top so for the um garter stitch since we finished with a row of knits we got a purl this next row and by doing that you go up on top of the loop go down and grab the working yarn from the bottom of the loop pull up a new loop take the existing loop off attach the new loop on the peg and tighten and we're going to do that all the way around let me explain that again so you'll know you go from the top of the loop down you take your working yarn under that loop you pull up a new loop from that working yarn you take the existing loop off of the peg put the new loop on the peg and tighten again from the top down pull up a loop from the working yarn take the loop that's on the peg off of the peg put the new loop you just created back on the peg and we're going to do that all the way until we get to our beginning again. So let's just speed that up a little bit. We are almost back to the beginning, and usually you can pull the existing loop off with your fingers, but for some reason my stitches are a little tight, so I'm having to use my loom pick to assist me with taking it off of the loom. But that's okay. You can use what you have. If you can use your fingers, that's great. So this one... But yeah, sometimes your stitches are tied and you need assistance. Okay, last one that we're going to purl. Okay, so we have purled one 
complete row. And it doesn't take that long on these small looms. So now we're just going to knit another row. And knitting is easy. I'm just wrapping a few as I go. And you take the bottom loop and put it over the top. But you should know this because you did all of this with this same technique. So we're going to knit this row. And then we're going to purl the next one. And then we're going to measure and see where we are. So I will meet you back after you've purled a row, knit a row, purled a row, and knit a row. And then we'll see where we are. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my garter the way I want it. And I just wanted to knit one more row because you want to end with a knit before you cast off of your loom. So, we have some options here. Okay, we're going to cast off, um, and I'll show you how to do that. But for the hanger, we have some options. We can either create an I-cord on the loom. So what we would do is cast off until we get to the last three pegs, and then we will make an I-cord that we can uh, make a hook like I did for this one. Other option, if you crochet, you can bind it all off, crochet a hook, and make a thinner hook. Or you can take some ribbon and thread it th through and tie a big pretty bow, and that would be pretty too. I have done that before. So we have options. So um, I'm going to show you how to make the eye cord. Because I know not everybody that loom knits can crochet. Um, so let's just do a simple bind off here. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit off this first peg. And I always have a hard time with my bind off. So I hope I do this correctly. So you knit the first two. And then you're going to take the loom off of the second one, put it on the first one, tighten, knit that one off, and then you're going to move this one to the next one and tighten. And this one becomes your peg one. So we're going to knit the next one. Take it off of the peg, put it on peg one, tighten, knit off of peg one, put the loop that's on peg one to peg two, making peg two number one. I hope that's not confusing anybody. You always knit the second one, take it off, put it on the peg in front of it, tighten, knit it off, take it off of this one and put it on the peg two, making peg two, number one, and tighten. So now this is number one, so we're going to knit number two, take the peg off of two, place it on peg one, tighten it, can y'all see all that? You're going to knit off peg one. Remember, peg two is empty now. So you're going to take this loop off of peg one, putting it on peg two, making peg two, peg one. And we just repeat this until we get to the last three pegs. We're going to do an I cord on this one. So we're going to knit, remove, Place on the first one, tighten. I just wanted to do this on camera as much as possible because this is the area that I struggle with the most. It's casting off of the loom. So I want to make sure you get it. So we knit off of the peg two, put the loop from peg two onto our peg one, tighten, 
knit off peg one, take the loop off of peg one, put it on peg two, now peg two becomes peg one. Knit peg two, take the loop off of peg two, put it on peg one. Peg two is empty, it has no lo loops, so we're going to knit on peg one, and then we're going to take the loop from peg one, put it on peg two. This is empty, so now this one becomes peg one. I hope you're getting that. So we knit. Remove. Just make sure you tighten when you take the stitches off of the peg. So we don't have, you know, loopy loops. <laughs> so knit off of the peg two. Take the loop on peg two to peg one. Tighten. Knit off of peg one. Take the loop over to peg two, making peg two. Peg one now. Again, knit peg two. Take the loop off of two, put it on peg one, tighten. We're going to knit on peg one, take the loop off of peg one, put it on two. Let's see how far we have to go. We have a few more to go. I think you might get that. You can pause the video, rewind it, and watch that if you don't get it. But I'm going to go and knit bind off until I get to my last three pegs and then you can join me back then. But if you need some more instruction, please rewind and watch it again as much as you need to. So I'll meet you back to it when I'm down to three pegs. Okay, we are almost where we want to stop. So let's finish binding off. Knit that off, take that loop, put it over here, just like we've been doing all along. Knit that off, take that one, put it on here. Okay, so we have one more to bind off. So we're going to knit this one. We're going to take that one off, put it over here. Gonna knit that one off and then take that loop put it over here and then we're just going to knit the next two we're not bonding off yet because we want to make our i cord okay so we have gotten everything off of the loom that's a very nice little neat edge there so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this yarn and wrap it around all three pegs and knit them off. Make sure you get both strands of your yarn because I'm working with two strands. You may not be working with two strands, but if you are, make sure you get both strands every time you knit. Okay. Why it wants to catch on that second one for me. You'll see that. And you're just going to keep knitting in this um, fashion until you get a long enough cord that you can loop it over and make um, a little loop like I did on this one. You'll see that. So just keep knitting. I don't really know how many rows to do. We're just going to kind of measure it and see where we are. This is how it kind of looks on the back. But these make, uh, if you like to do craft fairs, 
these are great for craft fairs, you know. And you can do all kinds of designs. You can do different stitches. You don't, this is just a basic knit. And I did this one in case someone's very new to loom knitting. This one I did in a basket weave, which I think is a very pretty stitch. I still did the um, garter top and bottom. But we can do that in a different stitch as well. So if you would like to learn how to make this one, like I said, please comment below. And I will do a tutorial on making a basket weave. But you can use that stitch uh, to make hats, blankets, all sorts of things. But as I was saying, these sell very well at craft fairs. I think I charge about $8 for mine. And they also make good housewarming gifts. You know, if I'm, um, something I like to do when I'm making a project and I know who the recipient's going to be, I'll just say a little prayer for them while I am knitting or crocheting or if I'm making something else. You know, it just, you know, you're thinking about the person that's getting it and just sending a little blessing their way. But that's just something I like to do. And I've heard some other ladies, they like to do that as well. So just keep knitting in this manner. Uh, it's not going to take much longer. But yeah, they make great housewarming gifts. And you can embellish these. If you do this um, just basic knit stitch, you can put some buttons on it. Uh, you can make some applique. I've uh, made them where I've um, crocheted flowers and sewed them on. Buttons, ribbons are very pretty on it. And you can make them in different colors. You know, um, if someone requests one from you and they have a certain color they're using in their kitchen, you can, you know, kind of color match. This one that I'm making here is a little bit shorter than that basket weave one that I made. But, you know, you can make them in various sizes. You know, somebody might live in a small apartment and they can't have a large one or they don't have the need for a lot of bags. So, you know, you can keep that in mind. They don't all have to be the same length. Um, you can put, hang these on the side of a diaper changing table. So, if you use disposable diapers... You can um, have one hanging there so you can grab a bag real quick without leaving the baby and put that dirty diaper in the um, plastic bag and dispose of it once you get baby safely off of the table. So, you know, that's a thought, you know. We use our plastic bags to line our bathroom garbage pails. It's the perfect size. You know, I don't see a need to buy small bags when I've got grocery bags. So I'm going to measure this cord after this round right here. And just kind of see. Let's see here. Would it make a good loop? I want it to fit on like the knob of a um, cabinet or hang over, you know, a changing table or something of that matter. Or, you know, just a doorknob. Ooh, make sure I get that on there. That'll mess things up. But yeah, just be very careful if you're using two strands as one. I just want to do it a little bit more. So I'll make sure I have adequate room. You know, a big enough hole to hang it. Let's do just a couple of more rounds here. And like I said, this is not a precise science, not a precise measurement. You know, a lot of things are just eyeballed. Let's do one more. And see, I, I rolled a ball from the outside and then I'm pulling from the center on this yarn. 
This is a one pound yarn. You can make lots of projects with these big yarns, um, especially these yarns that aren't quite as soft as others. This one isn't bad. I believe this is the Karen one pound, but you've some of the, it's not quite as soft. You can do them, um, you know, projects like this where, you know, it's not going to be against somebody's skin. All right, so now it's time to bind off. So we're going to do this this way. We're going to knit this one off. Knit this one off. We're going to take that one off. Put it over here. Tighten. Hope I'm not getting off camera. I'm sorry if I am. Knit that off. Put that loop over here. And the direction on your loom when you're just basic knitting um, doesn't matter so much. I'm left-handed, so I like to knit left to right. I see other right-handers knit um, left to right. But most right-handers, they do knit right to left because they're using their left. So this is ready to bind off. So now you want enough yarn to sew this in. So we are ready to take this off and just pull that on through. Tighten that up. Okay, we are through with the loom. Our project's off. So I may have made this a little too big, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, that's good, I think. That's what it's going to look like. So, this is where your darning needle comes in. So make sure you're putting both strands in the eye of your darning needle. Sometimes this can be hard. Okay, bear with me while I get this in. I might do one strand at a time. Okay, I got that one in. Let's get that one in. Of course, if you are just doing one strand, it might be a little easier. So just pull it through enough where it's not going to fall out. So you want this to go on the back of your project on the inside. So you're just going to kind of loop it over. And just decide how it looks good. So something like that. So you're going to take your needle. And just go all the way through and secure it on there. And you want to do this several times until it's nice and secure and it's not going to fall off. Do it at least one more time. Make sure it's nice and secure. I think that's good. Bags don't weigh that much. So I'm just going to weave this in a little bit. Make sure it doesn't come undone. Just kind of go back and forth when you're knit, uh, weaving in your ends. So it doesn't unravel. I'm going to go through one more time up here. You can do a little knot if you would like to, but it should be nice and secure. But let me show you how to do that. 
then I just take my needle through here tighten it up and cut this off and this is what hangs on the back now we've got this little tail right here so you can stuff your bags in here you don't want them to fall out you, but you do want it big enough where you can get them out so I'm gonna take this remember we did a drawstring so I'm gonna pull it tight just so much you know but I don't want to close it up because I want to be able to get bags out of it so we need our darning needle back let me get that fuzzy edge off here and you want a pair of sharp scissors to cut yarn I've got these these are yarn only and I'm mad at anybody that cuts paper or anything other than yarn I got both strands in that time all right so now that we've tightened that up let's kind of do a knot right here so it doesn't close up anymore and we're just going to kind of weave this in Till it's nice and secure okay I think that's good put our needle away snip the yarn close to your project but don't cut your project so now we're ready and you can stuff your bags in here and pull them at the bottom now you're welcome to embellish this if you want to put some buttons or some applique on there however you would like um, if you think you're um, if you're giving us a housewarming party and they would like a certain flower that would be nice but see this is a different link for both of these but if you have a small place you might want a shorter one so again if you would like to learn how to do the basket weave please um, comment below or some other stitches for this you can be creative if you are an avid um, loom knitter you can do your own stitches however you like but this is just an idea maybe you've never had that idea before but yes they're great um, craft fair sellers and you know make good hostess gifts so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did would you please like it and subscribe if you're not already and share the video if you found value in this. Uh, that means so much to me. And I hope I will see you in the next one. So come back Sunday for a recipe and next Wednesday for another crafting DIY style video. Until then, God bless.